Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well. In this Web Security Academy lab, we'll deliver a CSRF attack to our victim to change their email address. But there's a twist. Our victim's session cookie has the same site attribute set to strict, which means our victim's browser won't include the session cookie in any cross-site request. And we'll work around this by leveraging a client-site redirect within our payload. That way, our victim's browser will interpret the request in our payload as a same site request and we'll send along our victim session cookie, even though the same site attribute is set to strict. Let's go to the lab and let's go to my account. We know from the lab description that we can log in with the username wiener password peter. Let's change our email address to wiener at abnormaluser.net. And now let's go to burp and let's go to proxy and HTTP history. Let's have a look at this post my account change email request here. You can see here in the request cookies, there is no unpredictable CSRF token being set, and there's no CSRF token set in the body either, which means that this request is vulnerable to a CSRF attack. Now let's also have a look at the uh, session cookie. So let's go to the post login request here, and we can see the session cookie being set here. It's set to with the attribute secure, so HTTPS only. It's set to HTTP only which means it's not accessible from JavaScript. And the same site attribute is set to strict, which means the session cookie won't be sent in any cross-site requests. So we'll have to find a way around that. Let's go back to the post my account change email request here. I'm gonna send it to repeater, switch to repeater, and I'm gonna issue this request as a post request as is here. And note that we get back a 302 found for a successful request. Then I'm gonna change the request method to a get request because I wanna see if this endpoint also accepts get requests. So I'm gonna issue that and we can see that we get back a 302 for the get request here, which means that the endpoint also accepts get requests. This is handy because if we're able to find a client site redirect, which in nature is a get request, where we can control the input to that client site redirect and that input is sent to a sync that performs a redirect, we can potentially direct our victim to do a GET request that changes their email address uh, similarly to what we're doing here. Let's switch back to the application and look for that client site redirection functionality. Our application here is a blog and we'd have to think where would a blog implement redirect functionality. You'd often see it after a successful login or after registering an account uh, or after posting a comment. So let's go to one of the posts here, tracking your kids, view post. And let's add a comment here, I'm just gonna enter some random input. That's valid. So fuber at fuber.com. Let's post this comment. And we get a redirect page where we're waiting, and then we're redirected back to the blog or the post where we've added our comment. We can see it here at the bottom, foobar. And let's see what that redirect looks like in burp. So we're in repeater here, let's go to proxy and then history. And we're specifically looking for an input that we can control, that we can influence for that redirect. So let's go here to post comment. You can see our foobar payload here. And then above that, we can see the get request to the uh, redirection page. So let's scroll down here in the response. And we can see there's a redirect on confirmation function that is being called with the argument slash post. And it's coming from this uh, comment confirmation redirect external JavaScript file. And we can see a, a get requested at external JavaScript file right here. So let's look at the response and see what the code looks like. So it's calling this redirect on confirmation function, the argument block path. We know that that is slash post from the previous request. Um, it's setting a timeout of uh, 3000 milliseconds, so three seconds. It's instantiating a new URL object it's retrieving the query parameter post ID. And this is something to, very important for us because this is a parameter that we can control because we can control URL query parameters. And then it's setting the window location to block path. So slash block, it's appending a slash, and then it's appending the post ID, which it's gotten from this query parameter that we can control. So let's go to the previous request, the get request here and copy this payload to get request. And I'm going to keep track of our payloads in a simple text file. It's going to payload one and paste that here. Now we're going to go to the browser and just paste that here as well, just to see if this normal redirect works. So we get the redirect page and we're successfully redirected to post six. So that's working. Now let's try to get redirected to the my account page. 
let's copy this line and this is payload 2 and instead of being redirected to post 6 we'd like to be redirected to my account let's copy this line go back to the browser oh, and then paste this see we got the redirect page but then we get the not found error. And this is because remember the block path is prepended with slash post within the script. That was the argument that was being sent to the function. So even though we successfully added my account, we need to get rid of or remove this uh, slash post. So let's try a traversal attack. Let's copy this. So we'd like to do the same thing, but instead of um, being sent to slash post, we'd like to actually prepend it with dot dot to go back to the previous directory. Let's copy this. And let's try this payload instead. Hit enter. So we get the redirect page again. But now because there's a dot dot, we delete or we, we get rid of the slash post and we're then redirected to my account. Now let's try to modify our payload so we're actually changing the email as well. So for payload number four, we wanna do the same thing, but we're gonna copy. So we're gonna go to burp and go to repeater and we previously did a get request here to change our email address. We know that's working, that get request. So let's copy this part up to and including submit. Let's paste this. I do want to go back here to Wiener and add schnitzel behind it just to have a different email because Wiener at normal user is already in use. Let's copy this line, go back here to the browser and paste our payload, hit enter. We get the redirect page, see what we get. We get an error saying missing parameter submit. And this is because in our payload here, we are actually sending submit, but we are not URL encoding the ampersand, which is used to separate query parameters within a URL. So we just have to URL encode that now. So ampersand URL encoded is um, percent 26, but if you would like to check it yourself, you can go to decoder and burp, hit ampersand here, and then encode as URL. And then you can see for yourself, it's uh, percent 26. So let's go back and for payload number five, let's go to the ampersand and let's encode it as percent 26. Copy the line, go back to our browser and let's paste that here. Hit enter. Get the redirect page and we've successfully changed our email to Wiener Schnitzel. So without uh, URL encoding the ampersand, the submit equals one bit gets dropped off. If we URL encode it, it gets interpreted correctly and added to our request. Now let's craft our final payload. Let's copy this, payload six. We'd like to, so this is the payload that our visitor will be, our victim will be viewing. So we want to make it an inline JavaScript. And what we'd like to do is we'd like to set the window.location to our payload here. And let's close it with a semicolon as well. The only other thing we still need to do for this payload is we want to add the URL to our lab in front of it. So everything from HTTPS up to the end. And that's what we want. Let's copy this. Let's go back to the lab and go to the exploit server. Let's paste our payload here. Let's also change the email to evil instead of Wiener Schnitzel because Wiener Schnitzel is already in use. And then let's uh, deliver the exploit to our victim. And we get, congratulations, you've solved the lab. Thanks a lot for watching, and I hope this was helpful to you.